Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Sunday worship experience. I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your future journey. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your living word. And we ask that you would cause it to come alive in us to move us from being just religious to showing compassion to our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of today's message is Imitating Jesus in Holiness. If you remember last week, we talked about holiness, uh, a character of holiness uh, that God shows to us is a character that we must show to others uh, in order to exhibit uh, godly holiness. And we talked about uh, the story of Peter and Cornelius, how uh, Peter was a Jew and Cornelius was a Gentile, but God uh, had a conversation with Peter and showed him that uh, uh, God himself was not a respecter of person and neither should we. So Peter went to Cornelius's house uh, a Jew in a non-Jew house was highly irregular, but uh, that's a part of what God was doing in the beginning, in the early church of the New Testament. He, he, he was uh, bringing together what had been separated back in uh, the Tower of Babel time. Uh, and so today we are starting uh, with imitating Jesus in holiness. And we're going to look at the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan is found at Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37. And I'm going to read the, all of those verses. I think it's about 12, uh, but I think it's well worthwhile. Verse 25 says, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Verse 29 says, but he desiring to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, uh, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw the man he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And when he had when he, and then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii uh, and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three men do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? So the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. And he's saying to us, you do likewise. Now, it was expected that rabbis would discuss theological matters in public. And the question this scribe or lawyer asked Jesus was one that was often debated by the Jews. It was a good question asked with a bad motive because the lawyer hoped to trap Jesus, but instead 
Jesus trapped the lawyer. Jesus sent the man back to the law, not because the law saves us, but because the law shows us that we need to be saved. Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 says, Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ. And in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. And then Galatians uh, 3 and 21 says, is the law then contrary to the promise of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, then righteousness would indeed be by the law. There can be no real conversion without conviction. And the law is what God used to convict sinners. Romans 3 and 20 says, For by works of the law, no man being, uh, being uh, no human being will be justified in his sight since through the law comes knowledge of sin. And the scribe gave the right answer, but he would not apply it personally to himself and admit his own lack of love for both God and his neighbor. So instead of being justified by throwing himself on the mercy of God, he tried to justify himself and wriggle out of his predicament. He used the old debating tactic, tactic, define your terms. Now, there's a, a story in uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 9, uh, that talks about uh, the Pharisees and the tax collector. And the Pharisee, uh, let's see, uh, Jesus told uh, this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treat and treated others with contempt. And you remember the story of how there were two men, a uh, Pharisee and a, a tax collector that went to the temple to pray. And the tax, the, the uh, uh, Pharisees in his prayer, he, 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 he got by himself. He didn't want to get close to the other folks. He felt better. You know how it is to be snootish. Uh, and he prayed, Father, I thank you that I'm not like other men. And then he proceeded to justify himself at being good by telling God that he fasted three times a week and that he tied it in all that he had. And then the other man uh a tax collector who was looked at as kind of the scum of the earth. Not you didn't want to be around him. Uh, he was off not feeling good enough to be among the Pharisees and the regular folks in the worship in the, in the prayer uh, service. And he said, "Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner." And then Jesus asked. Uh, which of these two went home justified? And, and, and the answer was, the right answer was, the one that did not try to justify himself, but relied on the mercy of God. The Pharisee sought to justify himself, whereas the tax collector did not. He depended on God. Uh, and let's continue. So the, the uh, lawyer, the scribe, asked the question, what do you mean by neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And Jesus did not say this, uh, uh, that this was a story or this story was a parable. So it could have been the report of an actual occurrence for Jesus to tell a story that made the Jews look bad and the Samaritans to look good would either be dangerous or self-defeating. You just made that up, they could say. We would know nothing like that would, 
we, well, let me let me say it this way. We all know that nothing like that would ever happen. So it's possible that some of his listeners, including the lawyer, knew that such a thing had really happened. Either way, the account is realistic, whether it was a parable or just a story. It is realistic. Then and in today's today's time, the worst thing we can do with a parable, especially this one, is to turn it into an allegory uh, and make everything stand for something. You know how it is. We make uh, everything in the Bible stand for something. We make a number stand for something significant and, and, and so forth. The victim becomes, in, in this story, the victim becomes the lost sinner who is half dead, alive physically, and dead spiritually. Helpless, left on the road, and the priest and Levite represents the law and the sacrifice, neither of which can save the sinner. The Samaritan is like Jesus, who saved the man, pays the bill, and promised to, promises to come again. In the the N stands for the local church where the believers are cared for. And the two pence are two ordinance, baptism and communion. Now, now I, I, I admit that I said that to make a point. And here's the, pro, the point that I wanted to make. If you take this approach to the scripture that everything means something, Instead of what it's literally saying, you can make the Bible say almost anything you please. And you're sure to miss the message that God wants you to get. The road from Jerusalem down to Jericho was indeed a dangerous road. And since the temple workers uh, used it so much, you would have thought that the Jew, Jews and the Romans would have taken steps to make it safe. It's much easier to maintain a religious system than it is to improve the neighborhood. Ooh, that show slapped me there. And I say it again. It's much easier to maintain a religious system than it is to improve a neighborhood. Most of us can think up excuses for the priest and the Levite as they ignored the victim. Maybe we have used them of us ourselves. The priest had been serving God at the temple all week and was anxious to get home. Perhaps the bandits were still lurking in the vicinity and using the victim as a bait. Why take a chance? And that's our excuse. Why get involved? But anyway, it was not his fault that the man was attacked. The road was busy, so somebody else was bound to come along and help the man. That's the, 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 the priest and the Levite attitude about it. And unfortunately, that's our, our uh, uh, way of, of looking at things. Somebody else. Can help them. The priest left it to the Levite, and then the Levite did what the priest did, which was nothing. Now, this is the power of the bad example of a religious man. By using a Samaritan as the hero, Jesus disarmed the Jew, for the Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. It was not a Jew helping a Samaritan, but a Samaritan helping a Jew who had been ignored by his fellow Jews. The Samaritan loved those who hated him, risked his own life and spent his own money and two days wages even. And was never publicly rewarded or honored for as far as we know, what the Samaritan did helps us to better understand what it means to show mercy 
And that's the main thing of the whole parable or story, however you want to define it. And it also in illustrates the ministry of Jesus Christ. And the Samaritan identifies with the needs of the stranger and had compassion on him. There was no logical reason why he should rearrange his plans and spend his own money just to help an enemy that was in need. But mercy does not need a reason. Mercy is not always the logical thing to do. Now, being an expert in the law, the scribe definitely knew what God required. And this for his people to show mercy, even to strangers and enemies, was part of their learning. See how wisely Jesus turned the table on the lawyer? Trying to evade responsibility, this lawyer asked, who is my neighbor? But Jesus asked, which of these three men was neighbor to the victim? And the big question is, to whom can I be a neighbor? And this has nothing to do with geography or citizenship or race. Whatever people, wherever people need us, there we can be a neighbor. And like Jesus Christ, we can show mercy. The lawyer wanted to discuss neighbor in the general way, but Jesus forced him to consider a specific man in need. How easy is it for us to talk about abstract ideas and fail to help solve concrete problems? We can discuss things like poverty and job opportunities and yet never personally help a hungry family or help somebody find a job. The lawyer wanted to make the issue complex and philosophical, but Jesus made it simple and practical. He moved it from duty to love and from debating to doing. We can be sure that Jesus was not condemning discussions or debate. He was only warning us not to use these things as excuses for doing nothing. Committees are not always committed. One of my favorite uh, stories uh, or favorite D.L. Moody stories uh, illustrates this point. The story goes while D.L. Moody of Moody Press uh, was attending a convention in Indianapolis. Mr. Moody asked a singer named Ira Sankey to meet him at six o'clock one evening at a certain street corner. And when Sankey arrived, Mr. Moody put him in a box and asked him to sing. And it was not long before a crowd gathered. And Mr. Moody spoke briefly, inviting the crowd to follow him to the nearby opera house. And before long, the auditorium was full. And the evangelist preached the gospel to the spiritually hungry people. And when the delegates to the convention started to arrive, Moody stopped preaching and said, now we must close as the brethren of the convention wish to come and discuss the question, how to reach the masses. We may read this passage and think only of the high cost of caring, but it is far more costly not to care. The priest and the Levite lost far more by their neglect than the Samaritan did by his concern. They lost the opportunity to become better men and good stewards of what God had given them. They could have been a good influence in a bad world. 
just as we can be a good influence in a bad world if we show mercy and have compassion on those that are in need. But instead, they and we oftentimes choose to be a bad influence. The Samaritans, one deed of mercy has inspired sacrificial ministry all over the world. Never say that such a ministry is wasted. God sees to it that no act of loving service in Christ's name is ever lost or wasted. It, is, it all depends on our outlook. To the thieves, this traveling Jew was a victim to exploit. So they attacked him. To the priest and the Levite, he was a nuisance to avoid. So they ignored him. But to the Samaritan, he was a neighbor to love and help. So he took care of him. And what Jesus said to the lawyer, he says to us literally, go and keep on doing it likewise. Keep on showing compassion and mercy to those in need. And it all boils down to that being the way that Jesus treated and still treats us. He came to where we were picked us up, cleaned our wounds, and most of all, he paid for our continued care, and then he is coming back. In other words, he hung, bled, and he died for our sins. They buried him, but he rose from the dead with all power in his hand power to save to the utmost. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your living word. And we ask now that you would cause it to come alive in us to move us from being religious to showing compassion to our neighbors. In Jesus name. Amen. Well, my friends, that's all we have for today. I pray that God will use these words that I've shared with you, these thoughts, to move us from being just religious uh, people to being compassionate people, to being merciful people. Because the Lord did say, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive merciful, mercy. Mercy. And being merciful and compassion is part of the characteristic that we are to exhibit in the kingdom of God. And Jesus kept referring before this story of the Good Samaritan to his disciples and to others that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's still that way. So if we are going to be a part of God's kingdom, let's learn to show mercy and compassion for our neighbors. That's all I've got for today. I pray that uh, you will continue to wear your mask, that you will uh, practice social distancing or physical distancing yourselves from others appropriately and that you will practice washing your hands regularly. And we'll get through this by the grace and mercy of the Lord. So long. <laughs>